The Pump House Regional Arts Center has been a hub of the artist community in La Crosse for a long time, over 40 years. Since 1979, there has been an art community program within that building. I think that's pretty impressive, and it says a lot about La Crosse as a whole and about the strength of its art community, and also a lot about the quality of the programs that the Pump House Regional Arts Center puts on. The building itself is also pretty cool. Old brick building near the downtown waterfront, and it's been around since the 1800s. We stopped in today to talk with Tony Asher. She's the executive director of the Pump House Regional Arts Center. Talk a little bit about the history of the Pump House. The building sure. itself yeah, the building has itself quite the history. Super interesting. So what yeah. can you tell me about it? So the original Pump House was built in 1880 as a water pumping station, hence the name Pump House. It really was a pumping station. And they used it to pump water from the Mississippi River for fire protection. And eventually the city outgrew the capacity of the pumps here. And this facility was then used for several different things. It was also rented to the Happy Farmer Tractor Company. And if you know right where to look, (laughs) on the outside wall in the south of the building, when the sun is just right, you can see a ghost painting of the Happy Farmer logo. And it's a gentleman with a baseball cap on, and it's, uh, it's really special when you get to see that. I've lived in this town for a long time, and I've never noticed it. But now I'm going to look. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's a beautiful old building that you have. When you walk in this building, I think you just feel that this is a special space. And it blows me away that they burned coal here to power the pumps. Mm-hmm. So you have this, you're in a very industrial part of the neighborhood, burning this very dirty material. Mm-hmm. And yet they put in this beautiful vaulted ceiling and the angled wood, and it's just, just takes your breath away. You get artists from the tri-state region. And beyond, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about how you jury the artists that are going to be at the Pump House? Certainly. We have an annual call to artists that goes out in September, and it's open until January 31st each year. From that call... We receive applications from artists throughout the United States, but strongly from Wisconsin, Iowa, and uh, Minnesota. And so you have several different galleries within the Pump House. Mm -hmm. You can kind of hear the echo a little bit in here, and this is probably your largest gallery space that you have? This is our largest gallery, yes. And sometimes you have events in here, too. And so what's sort of the capacity when you do things in here? It depends upon the event. At an artist reception where we aren't seating people to eat a meal, Mm -hmm. we'll frequently have uh, two or three hundred people. And in the main area, you have sort of your secondary gallery? This is our front gallery. It is a smaller space. Very strong point of this gallery is the black wall. That wall just makes artwork pop. Artists plan their exhibitions around having that wall space. And then you also have a standard white wall. Mm -hmm. And then you also have a wall in the natural tones, so it gives artists uh, something to work with. And you have the third one upstairs, correct? We do. We have a lovely balcony gallery, and during the academic year, we feature artwork by students. Sometimes it's high school, sometimes it's it's, uh, elementary, sometimes it's middle school. You have to give them that opportunity that their stuff is hung in a gallery. They are in a professional Mm -hmm. gallery, and it's quite an experience for the kids, of course, to have their work in the gallery, but also for the families, especially of the younger kids. Frequently, this will be their first time coming to an art gallery. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're a little intimidated by that thought. I'm going to an art gallery, and I'm taking my kids. (laughs) (laughs) But then they get here, and they realize how accessible art is. And it actually could be a life-changing experience Now when they travel someplace and they see that there's an art gallery open that they could go to, they might go and have that experience because they know from this experience that it is an accessible activity they want to engage in. And it's good for kids, too. It's it's not just for adults. Yes. Not only do you have your gallery spaces here, but you also put classes on. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes, we do have classes, and we offer classes in really fun and unusual things. We do have a pottery studio, Mm -hmm. and we have what we call open clay studio, and that is open anytime the building is open. Sometimes it develops into this little community of people, and they just Mm -hmm. get together, they put on some music, make a pot of coffee, 
make pottery together and um, just have a wonderful time centered around that sound great. the art. Uh, we have a popular class that is the art of fly tying. Oh, perfect for the driftless. Yes. Getting out and doing some fly fishing in some of these trout streams that we have, which we're so lucky to have. We are lucky to have that. Talking about all the things you have here, you have all of this space and you have all these activities going on, but you also have a little stage here too. We have a lovely theater. It seats 140 and we present theater. We have a concert series, um, comedy. We have a film series pretty much always something happening on our stage. I know when people want to find out what you have going on for events, what you have going on for any classes, where can they find that? Yes, they can find it on our website, which is thepumphouse.org. La Crosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you'd like to share with us? Message us on Facebook, River Travel Magazine.